In this trail recon adventure, my good friend Marco and I head north along the famous Overland Highway 395 to check out some trails we haven't yet explored in this area, soak in some amazing scenery, discover some old historic sites, go in search for that perfect camping spot, and of course, cook up some tasty meals. Join us as we spend a few days deep off the grid in the eastern Sierra Nevada mountain range. Less than an hour ago, my good friend Marco and I were down in the barren desert. It was 91 degrees and the wind was howling at like 30 miles an hour. Well, we've since climbed up here 8,000 feet in elevation to the beautiful Pine Forest Mountains. And over the next three days, we're gonna be having an amazing adventure. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad. And that's right, over the next three days, my good friend Marco and I are gonna go explore some places along Highway 395 that we have never visited before, starting with Menachee Meadow, which is right behind me, about seven miles. We're gonna go hit the dirt, go explore, look, for a great campsite and if we get lucky maybe along the water Marco's gonna cook up some chow and we're just gonna relax and then we're gonna go explore some more this is gonna be a great adventure and I'm so glad you guys are joining us our first stop before we hit the trail was the Black Rock information station we wanted to check in see if there were currently any restrictions we needed to know about and see if we needed a primitive camping permit for the Menachee area which thankfully we didn't now the drive from the information center took us several miles on a tight paved back road till eventually we reached the trailhead. We took a few minutes to air down our tires since we didn't know how rough the trail was going to be and just in case we find ourselves needing a little more traction. As we were airing down, I looked over and Marco was mumbling about something. Marco, what happened? Dude, you have a fire? Dude, my fire extinguisher. Exploded inside my jeep. Oh no! <laughs> oh dude, I'm so sorry. Dude. You, you don't have a vacuum cleaner in that jeep? I don't. Oh no. Well, I got a fire extinguisher. We just gotta figure out how to get you cleaned up. <laughs> oh man. Well, things happen, I it, guess. It happens. Thankfully, the mess wasn't terrible, but just a good reminder to check your fire extinguisher before you hit the road. Now, typically on a multi-day adventure like this, I will download some GPX files and create a draft route in Gaia. But for this trip, well, I'm kind of winging it. I know where we want to start and the general vicinity where we want to end up, but we're going to do a bit of exploring while we're out here. Menachee Meadows is a remote area in the Kern Plateau where you can hike, fish, find dispersed camping sites, and explore some great 4x4 forest trails. This area is well known in the off-road and overland community, so if you venture up here in the spring or summer on a weekend, you can expect to run into some folks along the way. However, we are up here on a Tuesday, and except for a couple dirt bikes, we didn't see anyone on the trail or at camp on our way in or our way out. We had this place entirely to ourselves. Menachee Meadow Trail is an out and back trail, but there are many offshoot trails that can and should be explored. Now at the trailhead, the trail is rated as easy, but I don't exactly agree with that. I think it's more on the moderate side. Typically, the Forest Service, in my opinion, is conservative with their trail ratings, but there are a few good ruts and rocks along the way that rate this trail as more moderate. I've known about this place for several years and have been meaning to come up here and check it out, but we just always seem to pass it up and keep exploring further north in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Marco and I decided for this trip, we were finally gonna check it out and we were both so glad we did.
Well, I have to say, my expectations for Menachee Meadow Trail uh, have been far exceeded. I kind of expected this to be just a smooth dirt road, which it is not. It's winding through the forest. There's been a few little rocks and some definitely some good ruts. I'm surprised that it's rated as an easy trail. I'd almost give it a moderate rating. I mean, you could do this in a stock Jeep or a stock 4x4. You don't need big tires or anything, but it's not just a smooth dirt road, which I really am enjoying. So this is awesome. Now we have not yet seen any campsites in here, but we are keeping our eye out. And uh, as we start to see them, I'll mark them on my, uh, my Gaia navigation app. That way, if we get too far down and we don't find any, we can always turn around and come back and check them out. So there should be, should be a good campsite around here somewhere. Fingers crossed we find a good one. But so far, I'm enjoying this trail. It's pretty nice. All right, so I think we're about three quarters of the way done with this trail and we just came out of the meadows and it looks like we're going back into the forest a little bit, but we did finally see a potential camp spot. It's a nice wide open flat area, got some shade. So we're gonna mark this and uh, you know, this may not be the spot tonight, but who knows, maybe in the future we'll uh, use this as a spot. Interestingly, there are deer tracks all over the place here. Also, if you take a close look at the sand, you will see that there is some black sand mixed in, or volcanic sand. As you are out and about in the mountain range, you can see lots of evidence of volcanic activity from over 700,000 years ago when Mount Whitney last erupted. More recently, about 10,000 years ago, a tribe known as the Tula Tubabel tribe hunted, fished, gathered plants and held ceremonies in the Menachee Meadow. There have been several archaeological finds in this region and if you come across any, look but don't disturb. So one of the fun things about exploring a new place is exploring. And so I actually just decided to turn around and backtrack just a little bit because while this all here to my left is Menachee Meadow, if we keep going straight, we're getting away from Menachee Meadow. And so we wanna actually see if we can go deeper into it and see what's there. My understanding is there's some good campsites in the meadow, we'll find them. If not, there's a whole network of trails up here and we're just willing to go explore. So we're having a good time, it's still early, no worries. It's beautiful out here. Really impressed with the with the with the trailer with the Patriot Campers trailer. That little trailer goes everywhere. It doesn't matter. You just just follow. No complaints at all. I, I love it. We had lunch at like 10 o'clock, so we had a super early lunch, and I'm already starting to think about dinner. And you said you were gonna take care of dinner duty tonight, man. What's on the menu, brother? Oh man, certain steak, the stuff with uh, cheese and pesto sauce and some turkey. Uh, I'm gonna cook it on the scottle, and I'm gonna make some uh, potatoes to go with it. Oh man, that sounds good. Now I think I'm even more hungry. <laughs> Once we reached the Menachee Meadow and the Kern River, Marco and I pulled over to discuss which way we wanted to continue to explore. It was starting to get late in the afternoon, so finding camp in the next hour or two would be ideal, especially since I think we were both really hungry and looking forward to dinner. 
We opted to cross the river and head down a couple trails we saw on the map that looked like they might have some good potential camp spots. What are the findings, dude? Okay, so I walked up about a quarter mile and uh, you know, we were questioning whether or not this was public or private property because we've got some fence posts here and there's some buildings off in the distance. However, I think this is all public property and I think these are actually some old historical abandoned cabins nice. and there's potentially a really nice camp spot right on the side in the trees. This might be a win, dude. Just by happen chance coming down this trail, we might have found a spot. So I said, let's go up there. Let's go check it out. I didn't see anything that said private property. So I think we're cool. This old abandoned cabin was built back in 1938 by Henry and his wife Ethel, who raised cattle up here. Interestingly, Henry used to run pack mules for a film crew shooting movies up here in the mountains, down in Death Valley, and near the town of Lone Pine back in the 1940s. I'll bet that was some interesting work. This old cabin is now 84 years old and is still solid enough to be lived in today. Nice job, Henry and Ethel. Well, we have camp all set up, and I, all in all, I'd say we're pretty happy with this spot. I mean, it was it's already five o'clock, and so we could have kept looking for other campsites, and there might be some better ones, but I think we're I think we're doing all right. I mean, I got a nice flat spot right there for the tent. Marco's all set up with the trailer and his rooftop tent. He's all level. He's getting the scottle out for dinner. We there's a little bit of a breeze going on in here, but we've got a little bit of protection from these trees so it shouldn't be too bad marco's got his awning set up so we're going to have a little propane campfire going on in there because no actual campfires allowed in this national forest but uh i think we're having early dinner because i think we're both hungry yes yes it's going to be a quick uh meal a quick meal but really really good man. well dude it's always good it's always good with you brother <laughs> it's a good spot huh it's awesome i love it Marco, buddy, I saw you washing potatoes, and now you're chopping some garlic. What's the plan of attack? I'm super excited for this for this meal, man, because I got flat iron steak, and I'm gonna stuff it with uh, mozzarella cheese, with turkey breast, and pesto sauce. And I'm gonna make a roll, and I'm gonna cut it in in round uh, round pieces, and we're gonna cook them on the scottle. Uh -huh. And we're gonna have some potatoes with garlic, a little bit of oil and maybe an ice bear salad. Ooh, buddy, we're feasting tonight. Yes, sir. Watching Marco cook at camp is like watching an artist paint a picture. He cares not just about the ingredients, but the presentation. The cutting board, the beautiful handmade knife, the bowls and the plates, they all add to the visual experience. So not only do his meals taste and smell amazing, but they are visually appealing as well. Now tonight, Marco is using a flat iron steak for this dish, and he carefully sliced it in half to make the meat even thinner, which will make it easier to roll later. Then he did something I've never seen him do before. He began to abuse the food. <laughs> okay, the reason he is smashing it with a hammer is to break down the fibers in the beef, which will make it even more tender after it is cooked. After probably having a little too much fun with that hammer, he spread some pesto on top of the steak. 
This was a good thick layer. Then a few slices of deli turkey meat were placed on top of the pesto. And then he added some big chunks of some fresh mozzarella. Now for the difficult part, rolling it all into one nice package. It wasn't until this moment when I realized what he was actually transforming this into. Oh yeah, this is going to be good. Marco then inserted several skewers into the meat roll to hold it all together and began to slice it into some big old chunks. Then he placed those slices on the scottle and let me tell you, camp quickly filled with a savory aroma that only made us both more hungry. Now while the meat was cooking, Marco began cooking up some potatoes on the stove with a few seasonings and some cream. Then it was time to serve, and he added a new touch this time at camp, something I have never seen him do before. He had placed a couple cast iron hot plates on the stove that was going to keep our meal after serve nice and warm. Another nice touch. Okay, come on man, a hot plate, hot plate. that's a nice touch. That's a nice touch right there. Keep, keep food uh, warm. Well, the smell of the garlic, the beef, the mozzarella. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. That's tender. Yeah, so mm. good. Mm. Wow, that's good. Oh man. Holy cow, buddy. In the warm plate? Yeah. Dinner was mm. truly fantastic. And after a long day of driving and having fun exploring on the trail, there is nothing like finding a great campsite like this and then the reward of a great meal with a good friend. What a memorable day. Now, with any good meal comes a little bit of cleanup, but while doing some dishes is a chore, it is worth the extra work just to have enjoyed something so tasty. And while we were doing the dishes, and not being very quiet, I might add, we had some visitors. We're not, it's not like we were being quiet. There they are, they're now. Oh, now, now she notices. How did they not notice it until just now? Oh, they see us and they don't even care. As the sun began to set and the cold air began to move in, we settled in around the fire to stay warm and found ourselves sharing some good stories long into the night. Good, but it's cold. It's cold. I can't handle this weather. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, about two in the morning. I put my extra blanket on. It was. It's chilly.
Marco, are you over here laughing? What's going on? Dude, the soap is frozen. No. Look at that. <laughs> That's funny. That's crazy. This has been a great morning. Lots of coffee, some good chow, just relaxing and soaking it all in here. This is a beautiful camp spot, definitely worth coming back to. Now our goal this morning is to backtrack on the trail quite a bit and get back down to Highway 395 and continue our way north. We've got a couple stops we're gonna make along the way, but our goal is to get to another trail that we have never explored before and fingers crossed, should be a pretty amazing campsite if all goes well. So we're gonna finish packing up and we're gonna hit the trail. It's a beautiful spot, guys. You gotta come out to Menachee Meadows. Menachee Meadow is a great place to come and explore, and while we only scratched the surface on this trip, we probably could have stayed here another day. And now that we've been here, it will be a location I think Marco and I will both be coming back to again and again. This trail has everything I enjoy. Nice scenery, an engaging trail to drive, and a solid do-it-again factor. I'll leave my trail score comment in the description below. Okay, now. Time to air up and begin the next leg of this adventure. Things will get interesting today, to say the least. What a great morning. Menachee Meadows is an awesome trail, definitely one I'll be coming back to. Now we are all aired up, about ready to hit the pavement, and we're going to be driving for a couple hours to reach the town of Bishop, where we will refuel, grab any extra supplies, then keep heading further north on the 395, eventually getting on dirt, and if all goes well, we'll be camping near a lake tonight. I'm excited. I cannot wait. And let me just mention, Marco handed me a blood orange soda. This is one of the best sodas I've had in a long time. Our drive from the trailhead back to the pavement didn't take long, but it is about a 30 minute trek heading back down the mountain to Highway 395. Our first stop was to refuel these thirsty Jeeps and we had a very unexpected encounter at the gas station. All right guys, this is totally impromptu. Marco and I have stopped here uh, to get gas and just lo and behold, somebody else is here getting gas. Hello there! You gotta know this guy. What's going on guys? <laughs> How's things going up in Saragota? They're moving. You yeah. know, it's the right time of year. The weather's good. Uh, we're making some progress. I'm down on a gas run. <laughs> you guys are close. You guys are only oh, 25 miles to Saragota yeah. probably. Most. Well, we just got an open invitation to come up there. Anytime. And, Camp yeah. out. Hang out. I'll tell you about the Salt Tram Road. Yeah. I think you should definitely do that. It's this off-camera shale road that goes from Cerro Gordo to what used to take salt out of Saline Valley up and over into Owens Valley. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. If, if folks uh, don't, aren't familiar with you, yeah. what's the YouTube channel? So my YouTube channel is Ghost Town Living. Uh, I live in Cerro Gordo, which is an abandoned mining town from the 1860s, and I just kind of chronicle the restoration up there, mine exploration, and stuff like that. Yeah, awesome. Go check it out, guys. I love watching his videos. He's a great storyteller. I've actually learned quite a bit from you. Man, it's so great meeting this you. It's awesome. We're definitely coming up there. Too. Come up anytime, man. Yeah, Sounds absolutely. good. What a great random encounter, and he genuinely is the nicest guy. Marco and I look forward to paying his ghost town a visit in the future. 
Our drive further north took about five more hours, but driving up Highway 395 is one of the most scenic drives you can experience, and the views only get better the further north you travel. Plus, there are some historic towns like Lone Pine and Bishop that are worth stopping to visit and grab any supplies you need along the way. It really is a wonderful drive. Now, after a big mistake on my part, we had to make a slight change of plans. Let me explain. If there's one thing that's always true about adventure, and that is expect the unexpected, but I will explain in just a moment. So how cool was it running into Brent? I mean, man, I love his videos. Marco enjoys his videos. And so we are going to figure out a way to do something cool up at Cerro Gordo. That ghost town is awesome, and I think it would be fun to make a little trip out of that. So more on that to follow, but just what a nice guy and what a random chance of events just to meet at that gas station. Okay, so things have not gone as planned. This is not the trailhead that we planned on being at today. I was reviewing where we were going and checking out the National Forest Service and lo and behold, the trail that we are going to travel today is closed. And shame on me, I should have checked that a couple days ago. But now we know, and so we have kind of diverted a little bit, and we're gonna to go to a place where Marco and I have been before, but it's been about two years, Coyote Flats. It's a favorite, but we haven't been here in a while, and so today, it's gonna to be a blast. We're gonna go get up there, go see if we can find our old favorite camp spot, and cook up some chow, and just hang out, hopefully, next to a lake. Coyote Flats is located just outside of Bishop and is a steep and rocky trail that will require four-wheel drive and high clearance. The trail climbs to over 10,000 feet in elevation and there is a large network of places to explore once you reach the top. The optional trails on the flat range from easy to moderate to very difficult. And depending on where you venture off to, you may find yourself putting in a lot of trail miles. So be mindful of your fuel level. It's a great place to explore when you are looking to escape the Southern California heat. I forgot how much I really enjoy this trail. It's, it's not technical, but there's enough obstacles and rocks and twists and turns and shelf roads to keep you engaged for sure. And, and the scenery is beautiful. Now there's not as much snow in the mountains as I remember. It's been a very dry year, so the mountains are a little barren. However, that being said, we have to put down a lot of miles. And so we're gonna pick up the pace a little bit so we can get to camp and uh, have, have time to relax and uh, enjoy the evening before it gets dark. just reached the top of Coyote Flat and man, I gotta tell you, after two years, I kind of forgot just how majestic this place is. It's beautiful. I love everything about this trail, but up here, you've got this just wide open meadow with the rolling hills. You've got pine trees on either side of you and then off in the distance, you've got the jagged Rocky Mountains with snow on the top. It is just beautiful up here. I love this trail. It's got, you know, this trail has everything I like. Now, the only problem is, is this is really not meant for just a quick in and out like we're doing right now, because this is kind of an impromptu thing. If you're gonna come out here, you need to spend three full days out here and really soak it up and enjoy it and explore. Uh, we're just gonna come out here, go to our favorite camp spot, spend the night, and then, uh, and then go from there. I'm not mad about it because this place is beautiful, and I would probably give this, I think I definitely would give this, a perfect trail recon trail score.
Okay, so we just arrived to our favorite camp spot out here, but again, it's been two years since we've been here. And if you look, the lake is super, super low. In fact, the last time I was here, the water came all the way up to where I'm standing, and now it's way out there. That's pretty sad. Also, there are fire pits everywhere, and you can see over there, Marco is kicking over some fire pits because there are no open flames here, guys. Just remember that, please. We've just about got camp set up, and I don't know if you can see them, but there are bugs everywhere. There's dragonflies, there's gnats, there's mosquitoes. And mosquitoes don't typically like me much, but they do, they do tend to bite me here and there. And so I always come prepared with some good deep and a head net just in case things get a little out of control. But I'm sure once that sun drops, the temperature drops, we'll be fine. Well, camp is all set up. The sun has set behind the mountain and with it, the temperature has gone down, but thankfully the bugs are fewer and far between. Now, Marco is over there getting ready to make something tasty for dinner and all I saw was a blender and an oven. So let's go check it out. Okay, buddy, you got the blender, you got the oven out, you got some food. Yes, sir. What's for dinner? Chiles rellenos. Okay, for uh, those of you that don't know, like a guy like me, what is that? <laughs> chile relleno, this is a very popular Mexican chile. Okay. It's called poblano. All right. It's not spicy at all, but it's really, it's full of taste. Okay. And I'm gonna prepare it um, in a way that I'm gonna stuff it with uh, cheese, manchego cheese. Okay. I'm gonna put it in the oven with tomato, garlic, and uh, onion sauce. All right, all right. I'm, I'm, our, my mouth's watering, dude. I'm already hungry. Hey buddy, you are pulling out all the stops tonight. What's that white box right there? This is a rice cooker. Okay. To make uh, like like white rice. All right. Fire. And uh, I'm gonna use it to make my Mexican rice. Right on, okay. And that's hooked up to your jackery. All right, I see what's going on here. Bringing out all the stops tonight. Yes, sir. It is a very rare moment where there is something that I have in my kitchen that Marco does not have in his. I don't have a can opener. I got a can opener. I'm glad I can help, buddy. <laughs> not too much, just to give it color. Smells so good. Throwing the garlic and the rice. Oh, that aroma is nice. Guys, if you could only smell what's going on in this little oven right here. Look at that. Oh. Oh. Cheese, salsa. Sour cream on there. Oh, it smells good. Mm. Mm -hmm. Good, buddy? Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's really, really good. Just a little bit of spice. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. The sun has come up and we have had a couple cups of coffee and just enjoying this beautiful view. We love this spot, minus the bugs, definitely a little bit more buggy than we remember. Now I'm getting ready to make breakfast and I had this plan to make Marco an omelet with some fresh mushrooms and onions and some turkey sausage and oh, we were just going to have this big old hearty breakfast. And we were sitting over the cup of coffee and like, you know, let's just do those sandwiches again. They were delicious, they're fast and easy, and that'll get us back on the trail soon. So we're gonna keep it simple again this morning. I'm just gonna make these delicious sandwiches. <laughs> brother we're all packed up yes and we're gonna be backtracking guys out of here uh, you know like I said coming up uh, on this trail if you're gonna come out here definitely need to do more than just one night because there's a lot to explore out here absolutely but your wife's birthday yes is coming up and so you need to get home I need to get home and I've got a project that I'm working up uh, up north so I'm gonna continue up north guys but we're gonna wrap up this video here I hope you have enjoyed hanging out with us we have had man we've had the best time the good food good food Menachi good. Meadows we got to go back there yeah. Yeah, uh, just awesome. And we still have another trail that was closed that we will revisit. I hope you've enjoyed hanging out with us, guys. Make sure you go check out Marco over at Overland X. He's been filming a video as well. You want to check that out. We'll see you guys in the next video.